please join us in singing our entrance hymn, number 614, Amazing Grace, number 614. Please stand. Let us pray. Hear with favor our prayers, which we humbly offer, O Lord, for the salvation of the soul of Father Kevin Patrick Murphy, your servant and priest, that he who devoted a faithful ministry to your name may rejoice in the perpetual company of your saints. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain, God will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. God will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of God's people, God will remove from the whole earth. For the Lord has spoken. On that day, it will be said, Indeed, this is our God. We looked to God, and God saved us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that God has saved us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us go rejoicing 
to the house of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for all, us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge, like, who will bring a charge against God's chosen, one, chosen ones? It is God who acquits us, who will condemn it is Christ Jesus who died, rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who in, indeed intercedes for, for us. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor present things nor future things, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's share your blessing. the Lord be with you. Our gospel is from the account according to Matthew. Jesus said this to his disciples. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him and he will separate them one from the other, as a shepherd separates sheep from goats, who will place the sheep on his right, the goats on his left. The king will say to those on his right, Come, you, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me. In prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer, saying, Lord, when? Did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty 
and give you drink? When? When did we see you, a stranger, and welcome you, or naked, and clothe you? When did we see you ill, or in prison, and visit you? The king will say to them, in reply, Amen, I say unto you, whatever you did for, the, for one of these least brothers or sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will look to those on his left and he will say to them, Depart from me, you accursed, into an eternal fire prepared for, for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. And then they will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger, or naked or ill or in prison, and not minister to your needs? And he will answer them, Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. is Kevin's sister-in-law and she's anxious <laughs> so I just went over and I, I said to her Marlene Marlene not yet I said I, I have to give the sermon that's the part you normally sleep through <laughs> not that I know whether she does or doesn't because Marlene lives in Atlanta and I don't preach in her church but it's the part you normally sleep through but thank God Father Michael put a great sound system in this church so I'll be able to get your attention if I see you nodding off at all. It was on this same day, this fourth day of January, and it was the year 2004, that Father Kevin came here at about this hour to preside over a funeral mass. It was the mass of William Morris. St. Mary's was Kevin's first assignment, as many of you know. And as it is true for many of us as priests, he fell in love with this place, and more importantly, with the people of St. Mary's. And Bill Morris and his family were among those with whom Kevin connected. And it was Kevin whom they asked to come back to preside over the funeral of their husband and dad. This is Mr. Morris's son, also Bill, but not Junior, who's a parishioner of ours now at St. John's in Fairport. Bill told me that Kevin's theme in the funeral that day, January 4th, 2004, was home for the holidays. 
Now I can only speak for myself, but I tell you that when the call came two weeks ago today in the afternoon, the mid-afternoon from St. Anne's to tell me that Kevin had been found unresponsive in his bed in his room, room 511. When the call came that Kevin had died, I was immediately relieved. I'd felt it coming for days and feared it coming for days. But I was relieved. My first reaction internally was, thank God this is over. Thank God Kevin is at peace. He had lived, I think, you know, those who were close to him or observed or knew of his journey these last several years would agree with me that he lived the life of Job. And this had been punctuated by one complication after another, never seeming to be able to, be able to get ahead of it, to make progress, any sustained progress at least. In this summer and fall, it simply piled too high. I was relieved and thought, thank God, Kevin is at peace. Now, he had selected the scriptures, he had proposed and suggested the hymns that we would use, and he said very specifically that this should be a celebration. Now, he did not say that it should be a celebration of life. That is an increasingly familiar term. We see it used in obituaries and, and announcements and description of these rituals. But no, it was not to be a celebration of life. But it was to be a celebration of our faith, of Kevin's faith, as man, as individual, and as priest. The faith he lived, the faith he preached, the faith he ministered. So, intentionally, throughout his 50 and more years of priesthood. He gathered us together and he... In, this, in, this, in the selection of these scriptures, he points us to, if you will, and focuses our attention this morning on the core and the center of our faith. We begin with Isaiah. And the prophet imagines uh, Israel, he imagines the people of God on a mountain. The mountain was the, play, was the holy place. The mountain was the holy place. In Isaiah's theology, in Isaiah's preaching, in, Jude in Jewish life. It was there that the great feast would take place. It was there that, as we heard in this first reading this morning, that the eyes would be, our eyes would be dried, our fears and our trembling would be resolved. It was on God's holy mountain that we would receive and be assured of God's ever-present love. Kevin, in his ministry, celebrated that love celebrated that great feast that Isaiah predicts and imagines. Whether it was in the simplicity of a living room or the splendor of a church, Kevin gathered us around the table as we have been gathered around this table of the Lord and from which we will receive in short time, we will receive the, great, the greatest food, the greatest satisfaction, if you will, for our deepest and greatest hungers, we will receive the body and the blood of Christ in Eucharist. It is on this mountain, around this table, that our deepest hungers will be satisfied and nourished. Kevin intentionally reminds us of that in that Isaiah text and then turns to Paul's famous eighth chapter of the letter to the Romans that his nephew Mark just read for us, proclaim for us. Paul asks, can anything at all separate us from the love of God? Kevin lived this Pauline promise, I would suggest to you. I watched countless times. I watched countless times. We were together for 10 years as co-pastors at St. John the Evangelist Church, Humboldt Street in Rochester. And I watched countless times in those years, Kevin ministering that same assurance to persons broken by life's tragedy, 
crying with them, being with them, sitting with them. He put into action Paul's words. These last several years, it seemed that he himself lived the life of Job right before our eyes. Perhaps it was that Pauline faith that nothing above or below, nothing within or without, not the loss of part of one's body or the dignity of one's life, nothing, nothing can separate you, can separate us from the love of God. Matthew's great judgment scene, the gospel that Kevin selected. In that 25th chapter of Matthew's text. We always thought and used several times a simple descriptive. That it describes our life as Jesus' disciples. And it defines in clear and simple and direct words and terms exactly what it means to be a good Catholic, to be a good Christian. Isaiah's heavenly feast, Paul's assurance of God's ever-present love becomes action on behalf of others in our living, according to Matthew, according to Jesus' description in that 25th chapter. Kevin's life, his leadership as priest, as pastor, his care for the least and the left out was central to him and for him. He had a vitality and a creativity and a spirit in his person and in his ministry. Two weeks ago today, in the late afternoon of that Wednesday, I was in his room at St. Anne's gathering up his things, sorting through what needed to be kept and what could be left. And as I did so, one after another member of the staff at St. Anne's on that fifth floor came into his room. They wanted to tell me how much he'd meant to them, how grateful they were for him, how appreciative they were of him because he had been so appreciative for them and of them. They wanted me to know how much he had cared for them just as much as they had cared for him. In the days that followed, I received emails and phone calls from other staff at St. Anne's, all with the same message of both sorrow and appreciation and thanks. It wasn't just ministry. It was Kevin, the man, the priest, the person. Now, like his friend Bill, those many years ago, we are comforted. That Kevin is at home. His, our, true home. In the embrace of God, among the communion of saints, home for holidays, for time eternal. Rejoicing that God sent his own Son into the world that we might be saved, we now present to the loving Father these our prayers of petition, begging that he show mercy to our brother, Father Kevin Patrick Murphy, and lead him into the halls of heaven to reside there forever 
in peace and in tranquility. And so we now present these, our prayers of petition. Father, hear our prayer. In baptism, Father Kevin received the light of Christ, scattered the darkness now, and led him, her, over the waters of death. Lord, in the mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. Our brother, Father Kevin, was nourished at the table of the Savior, welcomed him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in our mercy, hear our prayer. Our brother Kevin, Father Kevin, shared in the priesthood of Jesus Christ, leaving God's people to prayer and worship. Bring him into the presence where he will take his place in the heavenly liturgy. Lord, in our mercy, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our family have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with our Son, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and pain each day. Show your mercy in those who suffered so unjustly these sins against your love and gather them in the eternal kingdom of peace, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, peace to all whose faith is known to you alone, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We are summoned here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother, Father Kevin. Strengthen our hopes so they may live in the expectation of your son's coming, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of life and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people, whose lives are purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ, and grant them a place in the kingdom of your life. And we make this prayer begging the intercession of your mother and our mother Mary, Queen of the clergy, as together we all pray. Hail Mary, full, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. <laughs> 